Well, the title of my talk today, Can the Lifespans of Rishabha, Bharata, Shyamza, and Ara Tell Us Something About the History of the Concept of Meru, is related to my work in progress on my doctoral dissertation, Mount Meru in Brahmanical Sacred Geography, some historical questions raised by the introduction of the concept of Mount Meru into the Sanskrit epics and Puranas which I'm writing under the supervision of Professor Johannes Bronkhorst at the University of Lausanne. My dissertation focuses on the historical implications of the late introduction of the concept of Mount Meru into Brahmanical literature and seeks to address questions related to its origin and why it was introduced from a socio-political as well as religious point of view. I will begin today with a brief introduction to my topic and then divide my presentation into two parts. The first part will present examples of the number 84 and its multiples, a little bit of mathematics early in the morning, which is a special group of numbers associated with cosmological phenomena or entities found in the Jaina and Buddhist canons. And the second part will present examples of the concept of Mount Meru also found in the Jaina and Buddhist canons. I will conclude with some brief remarks about the historical implications of the late introduction of the concept of Mount Meru into Brahmanical literature. For textual examples to support my claim that the number 84 and its multiples and the concept of Mount Meru are absent from Brahmanical literature prior to the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata, I have added appendixes to the pre-conference draft of this paper. And the relevant passage from the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata is also appended to the pre-conference draft. I look forward to your questions and uh, comments. The lifespans of Rishabha, Bharata, Shriamza, and Ara, as well as the height of Mount Meru, are designated by a special group of numbers, the number 84, and its multiples, which are associated with cosmological phenomena or entities of importance to the Jaina tradition. Furthermore, this group of numbers and the concept of Mount Meru, defined hereafter as the mountain at the center of the earth and the universe around which the heavenly bodies revolve. These two concepts are prominent in both the Jaina and Buddhist canons yet strikingly absent from Brahmanical literature prior to the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata. Provisionally, and I underline the word provisionally, this strongly suggests that the concept of Mount Meru may have entered Brahmanical literature under the influence of the culture out of which Jainism and Buddhism arose, the culture, of course, of Greater Magadha. The important connection between the Tirtankaras and Mount Meru is attested to in passages of the Jaina Canon, which describe the consecration ceremony for every newborn Tirtankara infant performed on lustration platforms by Indra and the gods in the Pandaka forest on the summit of Mount Meru. And this is what we saw so beautifully yesterday in the paintings that the Tirtankaras are always consecrated on the top, on the summit of Mount Meru and also in passages which describe the idols of the Tirtankaras located in temples in the forests and the four forests on Mount Meru. However, another less obvious connection between the Tirtankaras and Mount Meru is a special group of numbers, the number 84 and its multiples, which are associated with the extraordinarily long lifespans of Rishabha, Shreyamsa, and Ara and the extraordinary height of the four of the five Jaina Merus. For example, Rishabha's earthly lifespan is held to have been 8,400,000 Purva. And the two Merus on the island continent of Datakikanda, as well as the two Merus on the half island continent of Pushkararda, are held to rise 84,000 Yojanas above the earth, respectively. The number 84 and its multiples and the concept of Mount Meru in Jaina and Buddhist literature are relevant to the study 
of the history of the concept of Mount Meru in Brahmanical literature for the following reasons. First, the number 84 and its multiples, when they are associated with cosmological phenomena or entities, and the concept of Mount Meru are strikingly absent from Vedic literature, while occurring in Jaina and Buddhist literature from the start. Secondly, the main cosmological features of the Brahmanical Meru in the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata correspond to those of the Jaina and Buddhist Mount Merus, namely the height of 84,000 yojanas and the location at the very center of the earth and the universe, and around which the sun, the moon, the planets, and stars revolve. Furthermore, the late introduction of the concept of Mount Meru into Brahmanical literature marks the shift from Vedic to epic and Puranic cosmology at a time when Brahmanical contacts with Buddhism, Jainism, and their region of origin, Greater Magadha, were possible and presumably established. Thus, provisionally, these factors suggest that the concept may have been borrowed from the religious tra traditions of Greater Magadha. It is to be noted that this hypothesis is not based upon research into the symbolism of the number 84 and its multiples. For although these numbers, regardless, uh, I'm sorry, for although these numbers are very prominent, their significance is nowhere explained. Thus, regardless of any symbolic meaning, the number 84 and its multiples may have possibly, but not necessarily, had for the various religious traditions in the early historical period. There is evidence for these numbers associated with cosmological phenomena or entities in the Jaina and Buddhist canons, and none for them in Brahmanical literature prior to the Mahabharata. This alone, I believe, is a sufficient basis for the study of their historical implications. My hypothesis runs counter to that of Wulibald Kirfels, found in his major study of Indian cosmology, Die Kosmographie der Inder nach den Kellen dargestellt. In his study, Kirfel compares the Brahmanical, Buddhist, and Jaina cosmological systems and concludes that the early Brahmanical cosmology formed the basis of the later cosmology, found not only in the epics and Puranas, but in the Buddhist and Jaina systems as well. Suzuko Ohira also adheres to Kirfel's point of view and claims in her chronological analysis of the Bhagavati Sutra, both Jainas and Buddhists built their cosmological features after the models of the Hindus. However, in a recent article by Asko Parpala entitled The Beginnings of Indian Astronomy with reference to a parallel development in China, Parpala underlines that certain aspects of Brahmanical cosmology, such as astral names, appear rarely in Vedic literature, yet frequently in the epics and Puranas, and are traceable to non-Vedic traditions from greater Magadha. The following examples that I will present today are found in the earliest Jaina and Buddhist literature, and this suggests to me, at least provisionally, that the concept of Mount Meru may also be an aspect of Brahmanical cosmology traceable to the religious traditions of greater Magadha. So these are the following examples concerned with the number 84 and its multiples. And in relation now to the lifespans of Rishabha, Bharata, Shayamsa, and Ara. The Kalpa Sutra, a Shvetambara canonical text, states that Rishabha's earthly lifespan was 8,400,000 purva. The Jambudvipa Prajnapti, the sixth Upanga of the Shvetambara canon, also attest to 8,400,000 purva for Rishabha's lifespan and the same number of purva for, for Bar Bharata's lifespan. The Universal History, which is a non-canonical text, confirms Rishabha's and Bharata's lifespans, again, of 8,400,000 purva, and mentions Shrayamsa's lifespan of 8,400,000 years and Aras of 84,000 years. The Vyakya Prajnapti, or Bhagavati, 
the fifth Anga of the Shvetambara Canon, states more generally that the lifespans of Naradeva, Chakravartins, last a minimum of 700 years and a maximum of 8,400,000 Purva. And those of Deva Hideva, Titankaras, a minimum of 72 years and a maximum of 8,400,000 Purva. Furthermore, it is noteworthy that in both the Shvetambara and Digambara traditions, the number 84 and its multiples are omnipresent in the category of calculable ganita time measures. Their function is to designate calculable time periods of great magnitude within the avasarpini down-moving and utsarpini up-moving, two half motions of jaina cosmic time. Hence, the use of these numbers for designating the extraordinarily long lifespans of Rishabha, Bharata, Shayamsa, and Ara. The textual paradigms for the Shvetambara Ganika time measures are found in the Vyakya Prajnapti and the Jambudvipa Prajnapti. And those of the Digambara Ganita time measures are found in the Triloka Prajnapti, Triloka Sara, and Trilokya Deepika. The Vyakya Prajnapti and Jambudvipa Prajnapti cite the Ganika time measures from the smallest unit of time, one Samaya, up to the largest calculable unit, one Shisha Prahelika. And from the time unit of 84 Varsha Shata Sahasra upwards, the number 84 and its multiples are omnipresent. And this is what the system looks like in part. And here I'm showing this to you because it is apparent to me that this is a system. Now, Walter Schubring is the only person that I know of, and perhaps somebody else here can tell me something else today, um, that talks about the number 84 and its multiples. And when he talks about it, he says, well, this is a number which is used by the giants when they don't have another number to reflect something that is not based in fa on fact. And he just brushes it off like that. Whereas this seems to me to show that this is a system, this is something, a concept, which has been developed. And if this is the case, then um, the mention, which I will explain later, of the height of Mount Meru in the Mahabharata, the first time that the number is used with cosmological significance in the Brahman, uh, Brahmanical literature, is mentioning the height of Mount Meru as 84,000 yojanas high. But here you have something much more developed and systematic. Now I will talk about, the, uh, give some examples of the number 84,000 and the height of Mount Meru. The Digambara Trilo Triloka Prajnapti states that there are five Merus in all. One on Jambudvipa, which rises 99,000 yojanas above the earth and descends 1,000 yojanas below it. But then there are two on the continent, island continent of Datakikanda, which both rise 84,000 yojanas above the earth and descend 1,000 yojanas below it. And two more on the island, uh, half island continent of Pushkararda, which have the same height, that is 84,000 yojanas respectively. The Trilokya Sara provides the same information as the Triloka Prajnapti. In the Pali Canon, the Anguttara Nikaya states that Siniru is 84,000 yojanas high and wide, and that it descends 84,000 yojanas beneath the sea. There are other significant occurrences of the number 84,000 in Buddhist literature. For example, there are the 84,000 Dharmaskandas of the Buddha, that is, the portions of the teaching relating to the laws. And the 84,000 stupas containing the relics of Shakyamuni, which were distributed by Ashoka out of the original eight portions. The examples cited above for the number 84,000 are significant because the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata and the Puranas state that Meru rises 84,000 yojanas above the earth and descends 16,000 yojanas below it. 
However, it is noteworthy that the height given for Mount Meru in the Mahabharata is the first occurrence of the number 84 and its multiples with cosmological significance in Brahmanical literature. And now I'll go on to some examples of the number 8,400,000. The Vyakya Prajnapti lists the seven regions of the lower world, Ahe Loga, and gives the number of places of hell, Nirai Avaza, for each respective region. The total number of places of hell is 8,400,000. Also in the Vyakya Prajnapti, the number 8,400,000 refers to the number of Mahakapas through which a person much pa must pass before he can reach salvation. This is reminiscent of the 8,400,000 kalpas a person must pass through according to the ajivikas. The relevant passage attributed to the teachings of Makali Gosala is found in the Samanapala Sutta of the Buddhist Diga Nikaya. Finally, Padmana S. Jaini, referring to the Tathvarta Sutra and its commentary on the Sattvarta Siddhi, draws attention to, quote, the fact that the number 8,400,000 has been retained in the Jaina system to the present day, although in a significantly altered context, another context than the Ajivikas. This number is for the Jainas, a sum, the sum total of conceivable birth situations, yoni, in which souls may find themselves again and again as they circle through samsara. Now I will turn to just a few examples concerning the concept of Mount Meru. The Jambodvita Prajnapti describes Mount Meru as being situated in the middle of the innermost continent of Jambodvipa, the center of the earth and the universe, and as the mountain around which the sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars revolve. However, the concept of a central mountain around which the heavenly bodies revolve is absent from Vedic literature and only introduced into Brahmanical literature in the Bhishma Parvan of the Mahabharata. In the seventh chapter of the Jambudvipa Prajnapti, an extensive description of the movements of the heavenly bodies are given in relation to their respective distances from Mount Meru. The Surya Prajnapti and the Triloka Prajnapti also attest to the sun, the moon, and the sun and the moon revolving around Meru. And the Kalpa Sutra mentions the concept in one of the 14 dreams of Trishala, the soon-to-be mother of Mahavira. On the Buddhist side, the Pali Canon also attests to Mount Meru, but calls it Siniru or Neru. There is a Siniru Sutta in the Samyutta Nikaya and a Neru Jataka. In Buddhist literature, Meru is associated with two systems. The first is the Chakravala, or single world system, which describes the cosmos as a flat disk with heavens and meditation realms above and hells below. There are seven concentric golden mountain, did something change, no. There are uh, seven concentric golden mountain ranges with Mount Meru at the center, and the Chakravala, a circular mountain range made of iron lies at the outermost perimeter of the disk. The second system is known as Sahasra cosmology, which has a thousand universes, each with its own Meru, seven concentric circle rings of mountains, a sun and a moon. In both systems, the wind, the moon, the sun, and the stars revolve around Mount Meru. So just some concluding remarks then. Uh, the examples presented here are far from exhaustive, but attest nonetheless to the prominence of the number 84 and its multiples and the concept of Mount Meru in the earliest Jaina and Buddhist literature, as well as the concept of 8,400,000 great kalpas in Ajivikism. Provisionally, one can say that this strongly suggests that the concept of Mount Meru may have entered Brahmanical literature under the influence of the spiritual culture of Greater Magadha. It is possible that the concept of Mount Meru was introduced into Brahmanical literature as part of the overall response to the crisis which Brahmanism faced under the Nandas and the Maryas. At that time, Buddhism, Jainism, and other heterodox sects 
were favored by rulers over Brahmanism, a situation which threatened Brahmanism's survival. Brahmanism responded by developing various strategies to regain its former prominence in society. The reworking of Vedic cosmology by introducing key concepts like Mount Meru may have been one of those strategies. For example, the heavenly Ganges was said to fall down to earth on the summit of Mount Meru. And the heavenly Ganges, which actually refers to the Milky Way, was held to be the main source of the supernatural powers of the Brahmins. And it was the Brahmins who knew how to manipulate and control these supernatural powers for the benefit or the detriment of rulers. This was one of the ways the Brahmins could regain their power. That is, by making themselves indispensable to rulers who believed that the Brahmins possessed the supernatural powers that they needed to conquer their enemies, protect their kingdoms, obtain reign, male progenitor, and a place in heaven. From the Mahabharata onwards, the concept of Mount Meru has remained unchanged and prominent in Brahmanical literature and sacred geography to the present day. Thank you.